Welcome back to the channel and this is going to be part one of a three part tutorial series that I'm putting together on making a cute little corgi character in a blender. So like I said, this is part one where we'll be doing the modeling and then we'll go on, you know, to UV unwrapping, texture painting. So I'd say this is somewhere between beginner and intermediary. So it's not too hard. It's also not too super simple. You need to know kind of like the basics, but it's not hard. So if you're still new to Blender and you know the basics, you should be fine. So this is part one and this is kind of where we're going to get to. Um, you know, making this little character. I will be uploading the final blend file from this project to my Patreon. That'll be in the description below if you guys are interested. If you're not, just keep watching and uh, we, yeah, we'll make this little guy together. We're also going to be making this little scarf as well, which I think just really adds something snugly to this character. So let's jump in and make a Corgi in Blender. So let's start off in a Blender. We're just going to be starting with the default cube. And one thing you're probably wondering, since this is a round kind of character, why are we starting with a cube? And the reason is because we want the right kind of Topology. Sometimes when you kind of flatten a sphere, because you have the triangles at the top, I'll quickly show you guys um, like this. It can kind of create some weird stretching when we add uh, modifiers. It can make UV unwrapping a little bit messy. So we're just going to start with a cube. Okay, that's the explanation if you're wondering. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the default cube. We're going to go G, Z, and move it up a little bit, like so. It doesn't have to be exactly where I've placed it, just because it's going to be the head. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go into edit mode. And with edit mode, we're just going to go S, Z, and we're going to flatten it a little bit. And once you flatten it on the Z axis a little bit, you're going to go into your right orthographic view by pressing free. So we're essentially in our right orthographic. We're going to go A to select everything, S, Y, and just flatten it a little bit on the Y, about this much. And now we have um, a kind of box here. It's going to be the rough proximity of a head, but we want to come in here in the middle. Control R hovering over this edge. You're going to see a yellow line. So Control R or Command R. I'm going to double click and add that in. And you guys might not be seeing my keys. So I'm just going to add that. So you can see here the keys I'm pressing down in the bottom left. So we've added in a loop. Then we're going to come across here. Control R hovering over here. And you should see the yellow line. Double click, add that in. Come to the side. Control R, double click to add this one in. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our front orthographic. We're going to enable our X mirror. And let's just go into wireframe by pressing Z and going wireframe. If you wanted to, you could also just enable the X-ray up here as long as you can grab through and select both vertices, okay? Or three vertices in this case. We're going to go to the front. We're going to grab these guys here. We have X mirror enabled. And since this is symmetrical, we can now go G, move this one in, grab this one down here, go G to move it in. And let's go over here to the side. Let's click and drag, select these guys. Let's just go G to move them in, R to rotate a bit, and do the same here. Move them in, R to rotate, and just do the same here. Just rounding these out, bringing them in. Then we're going to press 7 on a number pad to go to our top orthographic. And then let's grab these guys here and go G to move them in, and these ones here as well. Just like that. Okay, so now we have this rough round shape. I might just bring this up just a bit. And I'm going to turn off X mirror for now. And now I'm going to come, just turn off the X-ray. Control R, double click. Control R hovering over this edge, double click. And let's just come in here, Control R, double click. And over this edge, Control R, double click. A to select everything. And then come over here to your tools and go to the smooth tool here. And then click on this little gizmo and just drag and smooth this all out. And now we've got the head. Now all we have to do is turn X mirror back on. Let's enable proportional editing. And then let's just go back into our X-ray and we can now click and drag and move it and roll our middle mouse button to control the fall off so we can roll the middle mouse button. And now we can just shape our head. So I'm gonna go something like this. I'm gonna grab the bottom here and go G and just drag that out a little bit and more to the side to create this kind of cute chibi looking shape. And I might just grab these verts down here at the bottom and just kind of move them down a little bit. So now we've created the head shape and in the side, we want to shape it just a little bit as well. So I'm just going to grab these verts here, maybe just move them back a little bit and then grab these ones here and kind of move them forward. And we have kind of like a little bit of a slant here in the forehead. So now with that done, we're going to go back into object mode and we're going to select the head and we're going to go to our modifiers, add modifier, search, and let's just type in sub and get a subdivision surface modifier. And now it's smoothed this all out. We're going to right click and go shade smooth. And let's just take the viewport level up to two. 
Okay, we can always apply this later or mess around with it, but for now we have the head shape. So now what we're gonna do is we can do one of two things. We can add in another cube and do the same thing, or we can be smart and select our head, Shift D to duplicate and Z to bring it down. And then we can go tab into edit mode, A to select everything and, and let's go S, X and flatten a little bit on the X, about this much. And let's go S, Z and flatten it a little bit on the Z. And then with it all still active, we're just gonna go S and scale the whole thing down. And let's go into our right view. And in the right view, let's just um, go into our X-ray mode, select these verts and let's just bring them forward. Grab these guys at the front and just bring his belly in a little bit. And then once you've done that, um, you can kind of grab these top faces. So you can see here we have eight faces at the top, like so. So I've just gone, clicked and drag and just selected those top eight faces. And we're gonna go S, Z, and we're gonna roll down our influence on the proportional editing just so it doesn't grab too much influence. I'm gonna just flatten it like this. So I can um, S, Z. So I've gone S, Z and just flatten it on the Z. And then with those all active, I'm gonna go X and delete those faces. So now it's open at the top and we can just kind of grab this and tuck it up by moving it up and we can scale it a little bit. And now we have the body like so. It's a bit skinny. I might just grab him and just go S, X and just give him a little bit more width like that. And that's all good. So now with that all done, let's just go back into object mode. I'm gonna turn um, the X-ray toggle off here. So now we can see the body. And now make sure to save by the way, as you're working. Now we're gonna add some simple arms and legs. So let's go shift A. Let's just go to our mesh options, add in, let's go with a UV sphere. And let's just go to our add UV sphere. Let's just make the top 24. And let's just take this one down to 12. Add the rings, let's bring this down. And now we can tab into edit mode with the selected and grab all these top um, faces. I'm just gonna turn off the proportional editing. Now we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and extrude up into Z about this much and then go X and click on faces. Now we've deleted the faces. Then we're gonna select all of this. We're gonna go G, Z and move it down till the top of the leg sits where the origin point is. Then let's go back into object mode and now we can grab this and we can go S to scale in object mode. G to move it and let's place it where the leg is. Let's go over to our modifiers and go add and go search and let's just type in M, I, R, click on mirror and let's make sure it's X and come to the mirror object. Get the eyedropper and then click on the body. Now it should be mirrored along the X. So what we're gonna do in this case, we're gonna go G, X, move it over to the side a little bit more. And we're gonna tab into edit mode. We can come in here, control R, roll in a few more segments. And let's just go over here and select the proportional editing. And let's just select this over here and just drag it out a little bit and just kind of create this sort of organic looking shape, kind of like half a bean. And in, in our side view, we can do the same. Grab this here. It's optional, but this sort of shaping just adds a little more detail. And then we can tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And there we have the legs. Now, if you're wondering how to make the arms, I'll show you. Ready? We're gonna grab this in our front view. We're gonna go shift D to duplicate, move it up here. R to rotate, S to scale. Bring it in here, tab into edit mode, and then come here in the end, select this vertex. Control plus or command plus. Keep pressing it to grow the selection a little bit. And then with proportional editing, we're just gonna go G, shrink the fall off, and let's just bring this arm out about this much. And then let's just shape it a little bit like that. There we go. You can make the arms as long or as short as you want. And you can come in here, shape it however you want at the shoulders. Completely up to you, but you guys kind of get the idea. So. Um, yeah, I might just come in here, control R, add in here, control R, double click, add in some more topology. Um, but really, I wouldn't overthink it. Remember, we're not animating this, so we're not thinking too much about rigging. So something like that, something simple is all you really need. Okay, so now let's make our Corgi ears before we go into anything else. And even though they might look complicated, they're pretty simple. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go shift A, and I think the best way to approach this is to get a plane. And in our front view, we're gonna go G and move it up here. And then we're gonna tab in to edit mode. And we're gonna go R, X, nine, zero and hit enter. And let's just go S and scale it down about this much. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing and let's go back into object mode. And let's go and go G and move it over here. So it's sitting almost in the middle of it sits here in the edge. We're gonna go R to rotate it like this. And then we're gonna go into edit mode again. 
And then we're going to select this vertex and this vertex. We're going to go E to extrude, click, and then S to scale. Maybe we'll just bring it down just a little bit, like so. And then we're going to come over here, Control R, add in a segment here in the middle, double click. And let's grab this one, move it out a bit. Then we're going to come in here, Control R, double click, and hovering over this edge, Control R, double click. And in our front view, we're just going to shape the ear of our corgi a little bit, like so. Let's grab these ones, move them up, just like that. So now we have this shape, very simple thing to make. And with everything selected, we're going to go E to extrude and extrude it back. And let's go back into solid view and let's go hovering over this edge, Control R. You'll see the yellow line, double click. And with it still active, go Alt S and just scale out along the normals with Alt S. Something like that. Excellent. And now go to your face select option. Holding in shift, select this face, this face, these two, these two, and also these two at the bottom. So all of these eight faces at the front. And then you're going to press I to inset it. Let's go about this much. And then you can go E to extrude in, like that. Now you're going to press A to select everything. You're going to right click and go subdivide. Then you're going to go to your smooth tool, click on it, and then click on this little gizmo, and then just smooth everything out. And now you have your corgi ear. And you're welcome to grab your vertex select option. Go over here and then just grab a vertex at the back. And then just kind of move it out a little bit to add some volume. And now you can come in here and shape your ear all you want. Make it look as cute and as stylized as you want. There's no right or wrong way here. It's completely up to you. So I'm just going to go with something like this. And once you think you like the shape you've created, maybe grab it again, everything, and just with the smooth tool one more time, just smooth it out just a little bit. And now that's looking really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into object mode, right click and go shade smooth. And actually, let's just maybe grab the body, the head, and just press H to hide it. And I'm just going to grab the ear again. And just so we can be a bit more efficient, we're just going to go into wireframe. And we're going to just press C to get the selection tool. And let's just go and select these bottom faces here, all these ones, like so. And let's just go X and delete those faces. And then we can go Shift, Alt, and left click on this edge to loop select it. And if this one, we're just going to go E to extrude and extrude it in, S to scale it down a bit. And now we have less unnecessary topology. That's optional. You guys don't have to do that, but that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back into my object mode. Then I'll go Alt H just to bring back the corgi head. And now we can grab this ear. We can go over to modifiers, add modifier, search, and let's just type in M I R, give it a mirror. It should be set to X and then click on the eyedropper and select the body. There we go. So now we have our Corgi ears. Make sure to save. And now what we're going to do is add his eyes. So let's go shift A. We'll actually go to options this time and add a UV sphere. Move it over to the side and let's go R X nine zero, hit enter. S to scale it down. And then in our side view, we're just going to go S, Y and flatten it a bit. Right click, go shade smooth. And we're going to give this a mirror as well under our modifiers. Click on the eyedropper and select the body and then just move it in. And in the side view, your right orthographic, graphic, you're just going to go G and move it forward. And then in your top view, you can just rotate them this way a little bit. And you might notice that I've actually placed mine a little bit further out from the body. And the reason is when we add a particle system to this body, um, the fur is going to be sticking out quite a lot. So um, because we don't want to create like a particle system underneath here to avoid the hair over here, we're just going to place the eyes here and it's going to be stylized, but it will kind of work for what we're going for. So we're not going to worry too much about this. Just kind of have them floating out here away from the body a little bit. Should be fine. And now we're just going to go shift A. Let's just add in a cube and let's move it up S to scale it and in a side view let's just move it forward flatten it a little bit by going S Y and you can now just in edit mode scale this on the X and just make a very simple little nose I might come in here control R double click just move up this vertex control R double click just scale these two Honestly, this is a very simple shape to make. Just something like this. Tab back out and then go to your modifiers. And just search for a sub and get a subdivision surface. 
bump it up, right click, go shade smooth. And that is as simple as the nose has to be. You really don't have to overthink it. Uh, maybe it'll be cuter just to kind of take it up just a little bit. I think something like that looks quite cute. And the mouth is simply just go to your mesh options, um, shift a mesh and let's just go get a torus. R X nine zero hit enter. And in edit mode, we just select half of this and go X and delete those faces. And then press A to select everything, go Alt S, scale in along the normals to make it a bit skinnier. And then you can go Shift Alt, left click on this edge and go F to fill it. Go Control B to create a bevel. And you can do the same thing over here, just F to fill those faces, Control B, create a bevel. Tab back out, S to scale it down and then go G. Z, move it up, and in your right view, just go G, Y, and move it forward. S to scale it down a bit, and you can place it wherever you want. So for me, it's gonna be right about here. Right click and go Shade Smooth. Rotate it a little bit, and there we have it. So that is our stylized little face. And even though we're not gonna be seeing it um, from the back, if you wanted to, you could go ahead, just add a little tail, as in adding a UV sphere put it over here. And then if you wanted to in edit mode, you could shape it a little bit. Um, but honestly, I really wouldn't go too crazy with that sort of detail because um, like I said, we are only seeing this after all from the front. But if you wanted to do like a turntable, um, you'd probably want to go ahead and do something like that. Um, but that's about it. So as far as the little scarf around the neck goes, we'll probably do that maybe towards the end after we've added our particle system. But for now, I don't think it's necessary until we have our fur kind of around the body. So this has been part one of actually modeling our Corgi. In the next part, we'll actually kind of join everything together. We'll do a bit of UV unwrapping so we can prepare it for texture painting. And we might do the texture painting as well in the next bit. If we don't have time, we'll do it in part three along with the rest of the stuff like doing our particles for our hair and doing the final rendering and materials. So um, just check all that out. Uh, on my channel, part two is going to be next. And thank you for watching. And always, always, I forgot to mention, I will be adding this blend file, the completed one, to my Patreon. All of that's in the description. So I'll see you in part two.